Well, hello my friends. Alpha Tardo back at the lake and finally got rid of that annoying uh, wine that the lake was uh, having. So not a moment too soon. And uh, this video is a little bit of a follow up on the VFD. The VFD after the install, I mean, you know, it's it's work, but and I know that some noises I had read about these noises before. Uh, the whining noise is almost inherited with the VFDs. Now, my last VFD that I put on the slave prior to this had no hum. This one, on the other hand, has a very high-pitched whining noise as it's running through the different uh, frequencies. Uh, frequencies. Well, you know, I knew it was there, and my friend Lenny uh, was the first one to bring it up. I didn't make it. A, I didn't put it in part of the heading. I should have to make people know that I was working on it and apologize for the extensive noise that it was creating. But my friend Lanny was like, wait, what the heck is that whining noise in the background? And since Sam, there have been a couple of uh, uh, people that commented on the same thing. So I had been trying to figure out exactly what was the cause. I had gone through some precautions. I had done shielded cable to in order to silence it because it tells you to use shielded cable to to reduce that and that's not the problem. Well on Facebook I posted it up again asking for help and one friend uh, says oh if your DFD is programmable you might be able to uh, change the, <clears throat> the carrier frequency. I gotta admit the instructions to this VFD have not been very clear. Uh, it's almost like a state exam, you know, it's all over the book. It's not in, in, in a way that I can understand. So anyway, with that keyword carrier frequency, I went through the whole owner's manual and looked to see where that word was existing and I found it. carrier frequency right over there and it has it in a couple of uh, places uh, which makes it a little bit confusing but anyway it tells me that I can change that parameter uh, up or down it tells me what the default is um, let me see what that is and that's this one right here that's probably what it's set at and I can go on that number it's five from one to sixteen so I will see if that will do it for me hopefully that will take care of the noise problem so going to this lower that to a one that's to get to the frequency stats okay press enter the next one starts blinking I'm on a zero that's correct enter the next one blinks and I will change this to 11 9 10 11 11 oh it changed the first digit 11 01 press enter and like I said it's defaulted to 5 so I'm going to change this into anywhere from 1 to 16. I'll start at the lower number and see what it does for noise factor. I know what it, uh, how it sounds right now. Press enter. So let me get it, give it a, a run. Oh my god, that's even worse. Okay, you can hear it right from the beginning until the VFD uh, shuts down. So I'm going to go to the other extreme. So I'm still set on 1101, which is that frequency entrance. I'm set on 1. I will go to the 16. Enter. 
so the two high extremes. Let's see how that sounds. I got rid of it. And what could be more appropriate than a good running late and Christmas around the corner? Merry Christmas, my friend. So to celebrate the Christmas spirit, this is not for any contest, but I'm going to be turning a small Christmas tree. Stick around. Let's see what I got already on the lathe. So I'm going to spin this up and make a Christmas tree. I'm going to color this up a little bit with a Yorkshire grit. This is a brand new piece of uh, scotch uh, steel wool. No chemical on it from before. Actually yesterday I was doing that little box or oh, that little vase, the spalted vase and I used this and for the first time I actually didn't like the effect because it was hiding away all the um, the spalting on the piece. It was camouflaging it. So I actually ended up resanding it. Oh, actually recutting it, uh, uh, really, and uh, taking it back down to the bare wood. And I did use the um, the Yorkshire grit, but not in the same manner. I did not use steel wool on the uh, Yorkshire grit. The, it's definite. Uh, it was an accidental uh, find, but um, the Yorkshire grit definitely reacts with steel wool. And um, you should be able to see it right before your eyes. Now, the wood did come up quite a bit red on this, as you can see, but uh, I'm gonna see how it does. already see the edges darkening up on me. So this Christmas tree is tinted or colored by Yorkshire grit. So I decided 
decided to go up a little bit higher with it and give it the overall coloration. Paper towel to wipe off the excess and get the uh, Yorkshire grit to do its job. not necessarily the methods that you would want to use. Just gonna clean up that little knob.
of a Christmas tree is. Uh, not so sure <coughs> if it really resembles the Christmas tree. That uh, little angel coming off the top is a shame. But then again, that's what happens when you just take wild chances on how you want to reverse it. Make it a good so, in this case, the clip was not a good thing. It snapped inside of my jaws. But anyway, here it is. My little version of a Christmas tree. Merry Christmas, everybody. And we'll see you maybe after Christmas. I hope.